Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is my quarantine hair. And I would like to welcome you to the Fundamentals of EC Design, also known as EC Design Fundamentals. So if you're taking this course in the fall 2020 semester, then the course is under the number ECE 3872, but that's a generic special topics number. If you take it in a different semester, it may have a different number. We'll generally just call it ECE Design Fundamentals or Design Fundamentals, or most often we'll actually just call it Junior Design. In August of 2001, when my hair looked more like this than this, I joined Georgia Tech as a freshly minted assistant professor. And at the time, students could choose between a wide variety of senior design experiences and specific disciplines. So you could do senior design and computer engineering or biomedical engineering, or you could have a senior experience specifically focused on DSP. And a lot of these would typically have some lecture component specific to that discipline. For instance, I sat in on some of Tom Barnwell's lectures on digital signal processing. Or you could do a project in power or specifically in electromagnetics or electronics, which is kind of an odd category because all of these things would involve electronics. They probably meant to focus on analog electronics here. Let's see, there's fiber optics. You could do some fancy control theory for your senior project. But in addition to all of these specific areas, there is sort of a generic senior design. And this eventually took over. 4006 became the standard. Eventually, that turned into 4007. And there are really two different reasons. One is all of the really interesting design problems in engineering nowadays are inherently interdisciplinary and not just between, say, DSP and electromagnetics and fiber optics or control theory or whatever, but also even between disciplines. So the most interesting things are where you get EC students and mechanical engineering students and aerospace engineering and biomedical engineering students and all of these various disciplines combining together. Although certainly you can do lots of interesting design projects with just a group of electrical and computer engineers. But we're definitely past the point where you really have these clear demarcations between subfields within electrical engineering. Also, I recall there is some concern about maintaining consistent standards in terms of deliverables and how they were judged between all of these different sections. And there is an idea that if you had a single design course like 4006, again, which was later called 4007, it would be easier to maintain some consistency. There were some minor tweaks made to the details of 4006, and it turned into 4007, the Unified Senior Design Experience. And this is where I first encountered it as an instructor in the fall 2008 semester, which was a lot of fun. A professor would be assigned a section of N students, and you would have to divide those N students into M teams. My teams range between three people and seven people. Incidentally, I found that the best teams tended to be three people, four at the max. Seven was definitely too much. In any case, before you took 4007, you had to take this thing called EC 4001, Engineering Practice and Professionalism, Technical Tools and Professional Issues for Engineering Practice and Early Career Development, Engineering Ethics, Design Tools, Financial and Economic Principles, Project Management, Ooh, Probabilistic and Statistic Techniques, and Decision... Uh, okay, that just all sounds boring. It's probably fair to say that nobody liked this class. Nobody liked to take it, and nobody liked to teach it. In fact, I know one professor who got stuck with teaching this class, and he went in on the first day and apologized. He said, I am so sorry you have to take this class. Now, something that's a little awkward with me dissing 4001 is that if you look at the description of 4001, you will see a lot of the same terms that show up in the description of this class. I think the main problem with 4001 is that material was taught divorced of any context. And because it didn't have any context, it didn't seem real. One problem with 4007 was that the first few weeks were taken up by students forming teams and picking projects. So they didn't actually get started on doing the projects until a couple weeks into the semester. 
Sometime around 2010-ish, the School of ECE went through a curriculum revision process in which we decided to basically take 4006, split it up into two parts, and combine the first part with 4001. In 4011, students would pick teams, pick projects, and write their proposals. And then in 4012, they would actually build and test their projects and write their final report. This would enable students to hit the ground running in 4012, and then in 4011, a lot of the material from 4001 that didn't seem very interesting could be made to feel more real because it could be tied into their actual projects. Although this approach has its advantages, it does present some logistical challenges. If students have to take 4011 and 4012 back to back, it means they can't do things like take a semester off of school to do a co-op. Also, sometimes students will get sick or they may have required military service, in which case not every team makes it intact from 4011 into 4012. We launched this in fall 2013, plus or minus a semester or two, with Tom Michaels, Joe Hughes, and Whit Smith doing the instruction and coordination. We also changed the advising structure a bit, so instead of having a professor being given a section of 30 students or so, and them getting credit for it as if it was a usual class, the opportunity to advise a senior design team was opened up to the entire faculty every semester, where each team you advised counted as one-fourth of a class. So if you advised four teams in one semester, that would basically count as one regular class. I realize that from a student perspective, that's probably more details than you wanted to know, but I thought you might find it interesting anyway. In later semesters, Mick West, Jill Arbach, Linda Malore, and Bruno Frazier got involved with running senior design. And in particular, Bruno Frazier has put a ton of work into improving the 4011 experience. I should also give a special shout out to Christina Bourgeois, who coordinates our undergraduate professional communication program in ECE, and who has been instrumental in incorporating written and verbal communication skills into senior design. Something strange that I observed about 4012, and this is just my personal opinion, not every faculty member in ECE would agree with me on this, is that even though students had gotten a head start in 4011, they had picked teams, they had picked projects, they had written their proposal, they would start the 4012 semester, and they would still spend several weeks up to a month maybe just kind of floundering. And again, this is my personal opinion, but I think the main reason they tend to flounder a bit is that this is the first time we've seriously asked them to design anything. So one day my colleague Bonnie Ferry contacted me and said, Aaron, I know that you like working with students and you like working with real hardware. I have an idea for a new ECE class aimed at juniors. Would you be interested in collaborating on creating it with me? And I said, yes. So although by that point EC had moved to a two semester senior design sequence, the thing that Professor Ferry noticed was that most of the other engineering schools at Georgia Tech had just a one semester senior design. So how is it that these other majors were able to handle having just a one semester senior design, but ECE needed two semesters? Something that Professor Ferry noticed was that nearly every other engineering major at Tech had some required design experience earlier in their curriculum. In contrast, the electrical and computer engineering curriculum at the sophomore and junior levels is almost entirely theoretical. We make you invert Laplace transforms. More to the point, I make you invert Laplace transforms. We make you solve three-dimensional vector integrals using Stokes' theorem and electromagnetics, or something like that. I don't actually remember any electromagnetics. Now, I'm sure that aerospace engineering students at Georgia Tech get their fair share of vector calculus and Laplace transform theory. But look, they also have this junior level class, AE3340, Design and System Engineering Methods, and it's a required class, and it's full of all this designy goodness. And look here, biomedical engineering at Georgia Tech doesn't even wait until they're juniors. They have a sophomore level required design class with all sorts of designy goodness. The most well-known class that's chock full of designy goodness at Georgia Tech is probably ME2110, which is a required class in mechanical engineering. 
Now, I have heard many mechanical engineering students describe ME2110 as a soul-crushing experience. And by the way, if you're a mechanical engineering faculty at Georgia Tech, you may want to look into that. So although our junior ECE design class is inspired by ME2110, we'll try to achieve our pedagogical goals without actually crushing your soul. The class is roughly divided into three parts. The second part focuses on a hardware design project. Although each team is given the same overall goal, you have a lot of freedom in terms of exactly how you implement the design. We have it due two-thirds of the way through the semester, both to avoid the end-of-semester rush in the senior design labs, and also to steer clear of whatever final project deadlines you may have in your other classes. In spring 2019, we had the students create an electronically controlled maze game. In fall 2019, we did a somewhat more artistic project where we had the students design robotic flowers. All of the projects in this class are formulated so that you can complete them using only the parts that we have in stock in Van Leer. So you don't have to order and then wait for parts, which tends to be a big bottleneck in senior design. We'll also teach you about some practical issues concerning electronic design that your other professors won't teach you. And it's not just that they won't teach you, they can't teach you. And the reason they can't teach you is that they mostly live here. They live in the realm of books.